Thank you, Colin, for that. that was really good to hear. Um, so I would like to introduce our next panelist, and that is Eric Freeman. Eric is the founder of Mindset Meals. Um, his inspiration behind this uh, organization that he started is he had some struggles going on in his life that led down to a dark path. Um, he pretty much found that healthy lifestyle and healthy eating had kind of helped turn him around um, in, in a mental, I guess, transformation. Uh, Eric is serving right now just to try to make the world a better place. And thanks for being here, Eric. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, thank you, Courtney and, and uh, Sarah for making this happen. Um, Conrad. Thank you, thank you for, for saying what you said. I, I definitely agree with you. Um, I was in a dark place mentally, and I think you're right. I think we need to work on ourselves too. It's not just them, right? We need to work on us. Um, I guess I kind of go into a little bit of my background and my story and, and being Hispanic and black and not feeling welcome. And uh, my mom was born in Cuba and came to the United States in the early 70s, I believe. And um, my mom at 21, she started dating my father who is African-American male here. And he's from the east side of the state and he was going to Grand Rapids Community College and that's how my mom met him. And my mom started dating him and she got kicked out of the family for having uh, for, ha for dating an uh, African-American. And by the way, mind you, the other side of my family is Cuban, right? So it's not just white people being racist. It's, it's a lot of people are, 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 are racist. And um, so she got kicked out of the family for two years. She still struggles with it today. She doesn't talk much about it. We didn't talk much about feelings of growing up. Um, ousted out of the family. Growing up, I was never white enough for my white friends. Hispanic enough for my Hispanic friends and family or black enough for my uh, black family and friends, right? So I was never really accepted. Um, and then you go to my dad living on the east side of the state um, and not really having a, a father figure in my life and that whole sob story about how black black young men don't have fathers and, um, and that obviously played a, a big factor in, in the negative aspect of my life. Um, I went to, I went to, I actually found, I guess, structure in sports growing up. I got into sports when I was well, probably in middle school heavily and I found structure in, in sports. So I, that helped me out a lot. Um, I went to a predominantly white high school. I went to Wyoming Park in 2004 to 2007. It was pretty much, it was pretty white. Now it's Wyoming and it's beautiful. It's brown, black, white, everyone's there, um, but not when I was going there. And I had about four best friends, I could say, and two of them were white, Casey and Ryan, and two of them were brown. And um, after high school, I was a preferred walk-on at Michigan State University for football, but I didn't think I was ready to play with the big boys. Um, and right there, I lost, because mentally, right there, right then and there, I lost, because mentally, I didn't think I was ready for them, so I definitely would have got killed if I got on the field with them. Um, so I ended up going to CC. And uh, I think six months in the CC, me and Casey and Ryan, my two Caucasian buddies, uh, we went to a bar and had a great time in the bar. And um, after the bar, we were approached aggressively by a, a very drunk individual and we got into a fight. And um, unfortunately that person that, or the, the, the people who we were fighting, one of the person uh, went into a coma and he ended up passing away, right? So a few, I think it was, I don't know, maybe nine months, they were trying to build a case. Casey and Ryan, who I was with, I was with Casey and Ryan, and they took a plea deal to manslaughter. And for some reason, I was portrayed as the big bad wolf in this case. Um, and I did play the victim role in this, in this for a long time in my life. And I just want everybody to know I don't play the victim role in that space anymore. Um, but I was portrayed as the big bad wolf in this situation. And I remember one of the first, one of the first times I recognized this is when um, we were on the news and there was a group of Hispanic males who um, had an altercation with the same group of people we did after we left. Right. And 
we didn't see that altercation. We had our altercation. We left. They came. They had our altercation, right? When the news put Casey and Ryan at the bottom of the screen, and then they put me with the Hispanic guys up top, I knew there was going to be an issue. And I was 18 years old when that happened. And that's when I lost respect for the media. Um, and, and I knew something was, was, wasn't right. So Casey and Ryan took a plea deal to a manslaughter and I took it to trial. Um, at 18 years old, um, my lawyer said, if you lose, I was facing second degree murder at this point. Now it wasn't, now it's not, now it's not a game. Now it's not manslaughter anymore. Now you're facing second degree murder. Uh, if you want to take it to trial, we're going to hit you with second degree murder. At 18 years old, uh, hearing that, I just, you, you just get numb, right? You're just numb. And uh, my lawyer said, if you lose this case, Eric, uh, you're going to do, the minimum you'll do is 15 years in prison. And I was like, let's, let's go, let's take it to trial. And we took it to trial and my family and I thought that um, the trial was going in our favor um, until the, 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 so how it works is that the closing, the prosecutor gets to go, um, your defense lawyer, you get to go. And then the prosecutor, for some reason, gets to go again, right? So the last thing the jury hears is what the prosecutor says. And the prosecutor was a very, very, very good prosecutor. I have respect for him. I speak to him now. Uh, I've spoken to him. And um, he said, maybe Eric Freeman didn't assault the victim that died, but he threw an aiding and abetting, right? So I went from, okay, we're good. I thought we were going to be okay to instantly knowing I was going to prison right away. By the way, it's supposed to be a jury of your peers. I think there was one brown person in my jury. So when I looked over to the right, all I seen was people that didn't look like me. Um, so um, like I said, I played the victim role in, in that space for a long time. And I finally got into a better mindset. And um, what, what, what helped me was, was, was food, eating better and, and being healthier. And that put me in a better mindset. So I think it's important that, like like Conrad said, that we we focus on ourselves and not play the victim role in our lives. And listen, if we're getting the opportunity, if we're getting the opportunity to to finally be heard, uh, and people are giving us the oppor to us the opportunity to 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 be equal, um, I don't want us to mess that up. Um, so just to piggyback off of what Conrad was saying, we need to work on ourselves too. So, um, yeah, thank you. Oh, thanks, Eric, for sharing that. I feel like I could have listened to you keep talking on that. You can hear that passion. You you definitely need to have um, your story. I kept finding myself nodding like, oh, man, it, you know, just that, that's tough to do. Thank you. Thank you for being vulnerable and sharing. Yeah, that. Absolutely. For sure. Thank you for doing this.